There you go. It'll come up soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can probably take this if you okay. want to. Friends, sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, and welcome to worship today with the Emmanuel Presbyterian Church community. Whether you are here in our sanctuary or joining us online, we are grateful that you have chosen to spend your Sabbath morning with us. Uh, some announcements for the day. Um, this big one was left so that I would be absolutely sure to see it. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, there will be no Sunday school on Christmas or on New Year's Day. Uh, enjoy those mornings, uh, but there will be regular church those days. Uh, also, on January 8 at 9.30, we will have a potluck breakfast, um, which I will likely have to miss because I'll be up at the other place. Um, and uh, on Christmas Eve up at the other place, uh, there are two services. I saw one of them was listed there. We actually have two services at Harbor Creek at 8 and 11. We'll be here at 6.30. Um, you could come to all three and really make a, a night of it. Um, I think that's, uh, that's all I have. Are there other announcements this morning? I did get a haircut. Yes, that, that's also true, you know. At the, yes, the harmonizers will be at the 11 o'clock service. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, yeah, today, 2 o'clock uh, up at the other place um, is uh, my installation, or our installation, because this is an opportunity to recognize that Emanuel Church and Harbor Creek Church and I are entering into uh, a new and uh, uh, you could even say blessed or sacred relationship, a relationship of, of, uh, of trust, a relationship of welcome. I have been overwhelmed by the, the reception that you have all given me, the welcome and uh, this is a, an opportunity for all of us, both churches, to come together and really celebrate the new thing that God is doing. So two o'clock at Harbor Creek for the service and then back down here at four for the meal. Friends, let's take a moment now to center our hearts and our minds on things divine. Let us breathe deeply of God's Holy Spirit. Let us worship God.
Friends, how easy we lost our way on the road to Bethlehem. How quick we are to dismiss the dreams and hopes our God has for us in this holy season. Let us come to the one who approaches, ready to swaddle us in forgiveness and grace, as we pray together, saying, Come now, Redeemer of the nation. For our world, our lives, need your peace more than ever. Come, summoner to discipleship, for we long to let go of our self-interest and narcissism. Come, word gifter, for we hunger to hear your voice once again, ever, always. Come, servant of the poor, so we notice you in all those we push past in this hectic season. Come, silence of our nights and holiness of our hearts, and forgive us for turning your compassion into commercials, your joy into jingles, your hope into hollow words, your love into lust for short offerings of the world. May we find our way to the one born simply, born gracefully for us, Jesus, the child of wonder and light. And let's take a moment now to offer our silent confession. We may not notice them there, at the back of the pile of presents, but it is God's hope, God's life, God's mercy, which are the true gifts we receive each and every moment. We give thanks to our gracious God, who has forgiven us and blessed us. Amen. And as God's as blessed and forgiven people, let us exchange our own signs of reconciliation and blessing. May the peace of Christ be with you. Well, friends, let's join together now in our prayer for illumination. Sure, you can, yeah, we can sit this. Come, good news of grace, prepare our hearts to welcome you and all whose hopes have turned to ashes. Come, dreamer of peace, so we may pour our lives and gifts into a world in need of reconciliation. Come, spirit of wisdom, so we may hear and believe the word written, proclaimed, and made flesh. Amen. And I'd like to invite any children or children at heart to come on down. Are they here? Oh, that's all right. Okay. Well, see, so, so that, was, that was kind of my message today. Was, so we were going to talk about this. I might as well talk about it, right? There we go. So, yeah, so what I was going to talk about is like surprises because we got surprised up at Harbor Creek 
this morning. We were supposed to have the Christmas cantata, um, but we had a little outbreak among the choir. And so we had to set that aside. I learned about that last night. So we just had to kind of figure things out in a, in a different way this morning. Fortunately, um, I already had already prepared a sermon for you all, but um, uh, things were different that this morning up there. And we figured it out. We got surprised. So, um, so I've been thinking about surprises, right? And the, the unexpected things that can happen. It might be just a, a snowstorm that is, uh, has kept us away. And, uh, and all the things that can just you know, change in the, in the service in the morning. And I got to thinking about whether or not those are the really important things. I don't think they are. You know, we figured out how to have worship up there. It was wonderful. We, you know, it's Sunday. And, uh, and we get one every week we get Sunday. <laughs> and what a, what a wonderful opportunity that is to just gather together. And that's the most important thing. Um, so, yeah, that's what I was going to, that's what I was going to talk to, to the kids about. Like, that all the stuff that we do and all that, that's, that's not really why we're here. We're really here to be together and whatever we do to share in that together. Here we are. Let's pray. Oh, most wonderful God for, uh, for the opportunity just to gather together, to, uh, to laugh, to sing, to pray, uh, to think, to feel. We are grateful. And whatever today brings, Thank you. Thank you. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he did not want to humiliate her, he decided to call the engagement off quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophets would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant, give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. From the prophet Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. And yes, again, we've got more Ahaz, right? The Lord spoke to Ahaz and said, Ask a sign from the Lord your God. Make it as deep as the grave or as high as the heaven. But Ahaz said, I won't ask. I won't test the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, house of David, that is Ahaz, isn't it enough for you to be tiresome for people that you're also tiresome before my God? Therefore, the Lord will give you a sign. The young woman is pregnant and is about to give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. He will eat butter and honey and learn to reject evil and choose good. 
Before the boy learns to reject evil and choose good, the land of the two kings you dread will be abandoned. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. This bit of Isaiah is included in the Advent lectionary, kind of obviously, because it has that line, the young woman is pregnant and is about to give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. Matthew appropriates that from the Greek version of the Old Testament, in which the Hebrew word for young woman becomes the Greek word for virgin. Then he removes it from its historical context and uses it to affirm the birth and identity of Jesus. That's what we heard in the passage that Ron read. And whether or not Matthew's exercise in proof texting is appropriate has figured into Jewish Christian debates since at least the second century CE. And the Isaiah passage does have a context, a pretty specific one that Isaiah lays out in the first nine verses of chapter seven. It's around 720 BCE. Ahaz, a descendant of the house of David, is king of Judah in Jerusalem. I think I've mentioned Ahaz in maybe the last three or four sermons. The king of Israel, which was to the north of Judah, and the king of Aram, which was to the east of Israel, they have joined forces and are conspiring to attack Jerusalem and install a puppet king in place of Ahaz, or the Davidic monarch, uh, a puppet king who would be more congenial to the Israel-Aram alliance. So Isaiah is told by God to go to a terrified Ahaz who knows all of this and say, be careful, stay calm, don't fear, don't lose heart. The evil being planned against you, it won't happen, it won't take place. And if you don't believe it, God says, Ask for a sign, any sign at all. High as the heavens, deep as the grave, anything you want. Ahaz, though, probably trying to be respectful or pious, says, I won't ask. I won't test the Lord. But Isaiah interprets that response not as respect, but as a refusal to trust. He calls Ahaz tiresome. Then Isaiah says, if you won't ask for a sign, which is a pretty rare offer by, from God, then God will pick the sign for you. And here it is. The young woman is pregnant and is about to give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. That's how it appears, present tense, not future. But here's the thing. The young woman is never identified. It could be the king's wife or the prophets or simply a, a pregnant woman nearby. The point is that her faith in naming the child God is with us will be the sign to Ahaz that God is protecting him and the nation. And ultimately, when all is said and done, Israel and Aram were unsuccessful. Now, if Matthew knew this passage from Isaiah well enough to quote it in his gospel, he surely knew its particular context. All that Ahaz, Israel, Aram stuff. He knew that within Isaiah's narrative, there is an assumption that God is with us was born, and that Israel and Aram, those two nations Ahaz dreaded, were in fact abandoned. That is, they were both eventually conquered by Assyria. So you could easily say that Isaiah's Emmanuel prophecy was fulfilled 700 years before Jesus. So why does Matthew bring it back? Perhaps it's because in the rich theological imaginations of these inspired prophets and evangelists, time was not entirely linear. Prophecy was not journalism, tense, past, present, future. They were relative and ambiguous. 
yesterday could be tomorrow, now could be suspended and held indefinitely. Matthew could orient Joseph and Mary and Jesus in the long salvation history of his people by folding Isaiah's prophecy forward and saying, we've seen this before. We've heard this before. Matthew drew from a broad palette of prophecy to paint his picture of Jesus. He called on Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea and Micah and the Psalms. But he wasn't saying that prophecy was a, an open question waiting for Jesus as the answer, that the visions of the prophets needed Jesus to fulfill them. The fulfillment of prophecy is not necessarily a once-and-done kind of thing. Fulfillment might better be thought of as a pattern, a recurring, growing, evolving revelation that certainly became clear in the story of Jesus, but not only there. And it can be fulfilled even in us when we lay claim to that image, that story, when we also trust and believe in the prophecy. The sign that God gave Ahaz, a, a young woman is pregnant and is about to give birth to a son and she will name him God is with us. That sign was God's way of saying, trust me. It's not so much about young women or virgins or boys named Emmanuel. It was about what that sign means for the one witnessing it. I can be trusted, God is saying, blatantly, and with a name that's almost a little too on point. The fulfillment, then, isn't that a young woman gave birth. Presumably, one did. The fulfillment was, or might have been, Ahaz trusting God. That and that may or may not have been the case, Ahaz trusting God. Ahaz was a, a king of weak character, and he lacked initiative. Elsewhere in the Old Testament, we learn that he went and solicited help from the Assyrians in defeating Israel and Aram, which indirectly set the stage for Assyria conquering Israel. I think Matthew looked to Isaiah and saw things similarly. Trust me, Joseph of Nazareth. Trust me, do not be afraid. Stay calm. Don't lose heart. God is with us, is with you. And the prophecy was fulfilled, perhaps in the particulars of the birth, but certainly in the trust that Joseph put in God. Rather than call off the engagement, he took Mary as his wife. And in Matthew's gospel, Joseph, who never says a word, Joseph is our model of trust as he guides the, his family from Bethlehem to Egypt to Nazareth, safeguarding them, taking care of the lives entrusted to his care. We also have an opportunity to fulfill prophecy to make it real by putting our trust in God, by holding fast to the promise, believing in the promise that God is with us. That may be easier said than done. For some, Christmas, the Christmas season can be a reminder of all of the ways that God might seem distant or absent an unwelcome illness or death, the loss of a job or other financial insecurity. We may despair over our toxic national politics or simmering tensions in international relationships. We may feel overwhelmed by the magnitude and implications of a, of a changing climate. And we might ask, in all kinds of circumstances, where is The witness of Isaiah, the witness of Matthew and Joseph and Mary, the witness of Christmas, then and now, yesterday and today and tomorrow, is that God is with us. 
prophecy is being fulfilled every time we tell this story, this story of, of Mary and Joseph and shepherds and wise men. It is being fulfilled every time we gather here and we are reminded or, or we discover that we are not alone. It is fulfilled every time we sing and plead, O come, O come, Emmanuel. It is true even before we ask because yesterday and today and tomorrow God is with us. And for that, thanks be to God and amen. please be seated. And we come now to that time in our worship when we join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. And I would invite you to share with me any joys or concerns, prayers or petitions that we might entrust to each other and to God. Thank you, Jeff. I'd like uh, prayers for our cousin, for cousin, my niece, Kelly. She's uh, going through some problems right now. She's uh, hopefully they're trying to diagnose whether she has MS or not. So she needs prayer. Thank you. Say, say her name again. Kelly. Kelly. Thank you. We have two joys this, uh, this week. Today is our daughter Brenda's birthday, mm -hmm. and then Wednesday is our son Brian's birthday. So, <laughs> wonderful celebrations. For the last two Thursdays, 
the men's brotherhood has manned the red kettle for Salvation Army at Tops on 38th Street. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to thank the men for helping out. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Art. Yeah. Um, prayers for my father, please. He's 89, took a spill. Um, there's no stroke, there's no heart attack, but his lack of balance got the better of him. So he is still in. My brother and his wife went down yesterday. So there's somebody under 60 helping. <laughs> so, uh, Don Chichester. Don. Yes. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I have a huge joy uh, being on the um, worship and music team. Uh, we acquired Sonny as our pianist, violinist, organist, <laughs> uh, everything. And she is such a talented musician that our church was very fortunate to get her when we did. And uh, she's going to be leaving us at the end of the year. So please, uh, mm. when you see her. Shake her hand, tell her thanks, tell her you love her. She's a great person, great personality. And worship and music is just really, really grateful that we have her. Yeah. Thank you. Friends, let's pray. most wonderful God, God of surprises, God of prophecy, God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, God of forever. We are so eager to celebrate that most wonderful surprise, to celebrate your willingness to to become one of us, to know and feel what it is to be us and to do it from the very beginning, to know what it is to be held in a mother's embrace, to be cared for by a loving father. We know too that you know our fears and our anxieties. And because you know what it is to be us, we can entrust our prayers to you, knowing that you hold them and you feel them. And today, oh, we do have prayers. We think today of Debbie, and Kelly, for Don, we pray that whatever healing and wholeness is possible for them, that you would make that real. And we give you thanks for the love and care of family, sisters, brothers, parents. We remember today, too, the joys in our lives, the simple joys of, of a birthday, that opportunity to, to focus our attention on someone and let them know that we love them. We give you thanks for the servants of this season and we remember those who are out there doing the, the work of salvation. Not just raising money, but for the work that the Salvation Army does to help those in need. 
and indeed all the organizations in this time of year who are, are receiving our contributions and help us to remember that need is not only in December, but those needs will be there in January and February. They will be there in August and October. And we rejoice this day in the, in the gifts of worship that have been uh, so enlivened by our friend, Sonny. She will always be a part of this community and we will continue to hold her in our hearts and in our prayers. Oh Lord, we are close. We are close. And the next time we gather in this room, we will light the Christ candle. We will sing those hymns of great joy, of peace on earth, goodwill toward all. We will celebrate the birth. And help us to remember that Jesus is real and alive, not just on December 24 and 25. Help us to remember that he was in the beginning with God. That Jesus, too, is yesterday and today and tomorrow. And hear us now as we pray that prayer that describes your kingdom on earth saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And friends, let us now continue in worship, indeed continue in prayer, as we return a portion of God's blessings back to God. Let's present our tithes and our offerings. Friends, let's join together in our prayer of dedication. Almighty God, receive our offering for the sake of Christ our Lord. Make us worthy stewards of your gifts and generous citizens of the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we pray. 
Amen. Shepherds kept their watching for silent flock by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Over the hills and the mountains, over the hills and everywhere, go forget uh two o'clock today at harbor creek and uh, it will also be live streamed on the harbor creek facebook page so you can watch it there we've got uh, a wonderful meal happening here at four o'clock and then next week uh saturday night we're gonna we're gonna fill in the blank <laughs> here and we will gather again to proclaim that jesus christ is born Friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in your hearts now and forever. Amen.